Hey everybody, welcome. Today's lesson is going to be about more transformations on lines. Today we're going to do some stretches or some shrinks. Uh, what we're going to do is kind of play with the slope of a line, depending on how they have it uh, formatted when they write the function. So just real quickly, basics, stretches and shrinks, they can be horizontal stretches and horizontal, sh horizontal shrinks, or they can be vertical stretches and vertical shrinks. Now just in my experience, uh, the questions that I see pop up most often are usually the vertical ones, so I'm going to address those first. We do have some horizontal ones coming up here on a, on a different board, but I don't usually see those as often, like on big time tests and stuff. So really quickly, here's what the format will look like. They'll give you a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink, and it will look kind of the same, right? They'll give you an equation or a function, and they'll have some number in the spot of the letter A, right? The letter A is always going to be a number. They're going to have some number that is going to be outside the parentheses before the letter F that they're multiplying everything by. Okay. How do you know if it's a stretch or a shrink? You just look and see how big is this letter A. Right? If that letter A is a number that's greater than 1, we're going to call it a vertical stretch. We're going to take this and we're going to stretch it up. If it is a number that is um, less than 1, and when I say less than 1, it's usually between 0 and 1. Right? It's not going to be a negative. But if you see a number that's less than 1, that's going to take the line and that's going to shrink it down. Right? And so on these vertical ones, the x-intercept, wherever this line crosses the x-axis, is going to stay the same. And we'll either stretch it up or we'll shrink it down. And uh, that's how they will look. And so how do you tell if it's a stretch or a shrink? You look at what number is right here. What number is the new kind of coefficient on the letter f of x? So like here's an example. Uh, the f of x equals x. That's Remember, that's just our basic one. That's our parent function. That's the one that if I did a little x and y chart for, and I just did 1, 2, 3, I would just put a 1 in there, and it's just going to go 1, 2, 3. It's the basic one that just goes right through the origin and has a slope of 1. Very simple. Now, here are the ones that are stretches and shrinks. See how you've got a number out in front of the letter f, right? Here you have a 3. Here you have a 1 half. That is your indicator that this is a vertical stretch. In a minute, we'll see how horizontal this number is going to be inside the parentheses. But when the number is out in front of the parentheses, in front of the letter F, or whichever letter they use, it's usually an F, but if that number is out in front of the parentheses, it's a clue and an indicator that you have a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink. How do you know which one it is? You just look at the number. If the number is bigger than 1, like this, this means we're going to make this line three times as steep as it was in the original equation. This is going to be three times as steep, and this is going to be half as steep. This number is smaller than one. It's between zero and one. And this is going to be a vertical shrink. We're going to shrink this down and make it flatter. So if I really wanted to make an x and y table for this, um, the vertical ones are actually pretty easy. You just take your normal numbers, you put them in there, you plug it in like normal, and I just put my 1, I put my 2, I put my 3 in there. And then at the end, at the end, notice where I said, at the end, you take your answer and you multiply it by 3. You multiply it by 3. You multiply it by 3. And you get 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. And so my new coordinates are 1, 3, 2, 6. Oh, boy. 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 3, 9. 3 to the right, and then 9 up. Something like this. You know what? Let me actually connect this in green, since I use green over here. And so this line is going to go, well, I didn't draw it the straightest. Kind of like this. Notice the x-intercept is still the same. It still crosses the x-axis at the origin. Well, we just took this, and we kind of stretched it up there to make it, um, this is the g of x right there. Now, the same thing can happen if it's a number smaller than 1. Like here, you have the number 1 half. You're going to follow the same procedure. If you had to graph it, you would take whatever number you wanted, plug it in there, up in the original equation, 1, 2, 3. There's nothing to work out here, so I just copy down 1, 2, 3. But the only difference here is now I'm multiplying it by 1 half. So I'm going to cut everything in half or multiply everything by 1 half. It's the same thing. If you cut 1 and 1 half, you have 1 half. If you cut the number 2 and half, you have 1. If you cut 3 and half, you have 1.5. So I apologize. My marker's kind of getting a little bit out of control there. Not easy to read. So you have 1 with 1 half. 
which is one on the right, and then like one half. <laughs> really even hard to draw. Here you have two with one, two with one, which is right there. And here you have three with 1.5. Three with 1.5 is like right here. And so this line is going to like, oh man, it's really even hard to do it. It's gonna go kind of like this. Do you see how the black line is like the normal slope, the slope of one, and this is a slope of half. It's like taking this and I've shrunken it down. It's a vertical shrink because it's getting closer to the x-axis. Okay, so that's how we're gonna do that. Um, these are very straightforward. I like these the best. In my opinion, these are the ones that um, show up the most in like big time tests and assignments. How do you tell that it's vertical? Look, this number is that we're multiplying by is in front of the parentheses, vertical stretch. If it's bigger than one, stretch. If it's less than one, shrink. And we use kind of a phrase, this is a vertical stretch, and this number right here that we multiplied everything by, you say this is a vertical stretch by a factor of three. And then when I get down here to the red one, when it was a vertical shrink, right, because my number right here was less than one, we call this a vertical shrink by a factor of one half. The word factor is kind of like what you were manipulating the slope by. What were you multiplying by whenever you did your little manipulation at the end? So vertical stretch, factor of three, vertical shrink, factor of one half. This is the normal one. You are probably gonna like these the best. Okay, are you ready to get crazy? This one is the crazy one. Horizontal is going to be different. In that, look where the letter A is located. The letter A is now in the parentheses. It's part of the input, not the output. Right? And so everything is backwards with horizontal. I don't know why. I'm not exactly the best at these, and to be honest, I don't have a lot of experience with them. But everything is backwards. Whenever your letter A is a number smaller, right, a number that's in between 0 and 1, when it's smaller, we're actually going to call it a stretch. And that doesn't make sense. right? Usually if it's smaller, you think it would be called a shrink. But horizontal is so backwards. Everything is just flipped from the opposite of what you think. And so like here on horizontal, the shrink is actually when the number is bigger than 1. And that's the complete opposite of what we did here. Vertical is very easy. When it's bigger than 1, we call it a stretch. When it's less than 1, we call it a shrink. Here, everything is backwards. So how do I tell that it's horizontal? I notice that the letter A, or here your number, see how I have the number two and the number one half, the same numbers I used on the last one? Well, one of them is the same. The number is inside the parentheses. That's your dead giveaway that you have horizontal. So if you see the number inside the parentheses with the letter X or whichever variable they picked, you know that it's horizontal and immediately you need to think everything is backwards, right? Everything is backwards. So a number bigger than one is actually gonna be called a shrink and a number smaller than one is actually gonna be called a stretch. And then when we go to say the, the what factor it is, you have to do like the reciprocal of what the actual factor is. So like this is a number bigger than one, but it's gonna be backwards. This is actually a shrink. It's a shrink by a factor of one half because one half is the reciprocal of two. It's weird, I know. And then here, this is actually a number smaller than one, so common sense would tell me that this is a shrink, but it's not. This is a stretch, and it's a stretch by the reciprocal of this number, which is actually two over one, or just two. This is a stretch by a factor of two. Okay, let me show you kind of how this works. I hope this kind of makes sense. If this is hurting your brain a little bit, don't feel embarrassed. If I graphed this one right here, this is just my regular one. It's not the parent one that I just made up. I just completely made it up. Your y-intercept is one, so I would put a dot on one and then your slope is two, so that's gonna be like up two over one, up two over one. So I'm gonna go up two over one from that first dot, up two more over one more. Okay, something like this, not too hard. That's the letter F of X. Now the letter G is gonna be this. Immediately, I recognize this is horizontal because my, my letter A, my number that I'm, I'm noticing in here, it's in the parentheses. So what does that mean? It means when I go to do my little X and Y table, if I pick one, if I pick two, if I pick three, I'm not going to wait until the end, like we did on the other ones, to do my multiplying. Since this is inside the parentheses, I'm gonna multiply everything by two right now. I'm gonna multiply all these numbers by two right now, and I'm gonna change the input, because it's in the parentheses. So here, one times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six. Kind of give myself a little room there. And so now that's what I'm actually gonna plug in if I put two, my new number up here, two times two is four, 
2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. If I put 4 up here, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. And if I put 6 up in here, 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. Holy cow. So my point is actually 1, 5. So that's going to be 1 to the right and 5 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my second point is going to be 2, 9. 2 to the right and 9 up. I don't even have room to do that hardly. All right? Um, and then we're going to put, if we had room, 3, 13. 3, 13. I could kind of freehand it way up here. The y-intercept actually stays the same on these. You do not change the y-intercept. On the horizontal ones, the y-intercept does not move. On the ones we did earlier, the x-intercept does not move. So the y-intercept doesn't move. I'm gonna call this letter G. I probably should use green, but I didn't. I switched to blue for some reason. This is a, this is a horizontal. Now my, my mind wants to say a stretch because this number is bigger than one, but it's not. This is horizontal shrink and then this is a factor of one half because you do the reciprocal of whatever this number is here, here, your letter A. That is crazy, but that's how it works. I don't know why, it just does. Okay, the next one, same idea. I'm gonna do my X and Y table. Let me give myself a little bit more room. I'm gonna pick my numbers that I want again, but now the number that I wanna multiply everything by in the input, see, because I'm in the parentheses, is gonna be one half. So I'm gonna take all these numbers and cut them in half right now at the beginning, right? On that other one we did a few minutes ago, on the vertical, we cut them in half at the end over here in the Y section, but I'm cutting all these in half right now. What's half of two? That's one. What's half of three? No, oh, geez, 1.5. <laughs> all right, fractions, not gonna be my favorite. So I'm gonna take the number one half and plug it up here. Half of two is one, one plus one. Okay, that equals two. I'm gonna take the number one and plug it up here. Two times one is two, two plus one is three. Here's the one that's not gonna be fun. 1.5 is what I got down here. If I take 1.5 and put it right here, two times 1.5 is actually three, three plus one is four. Okay, so I have these new points. Let me kind of highlight it with a color I haven't. One, two, one, two, right there. Two, three, two, three, right there. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. And so the points here, the x-axis, x-intercepts are actually going to be the same. I didn't connect those very well. Maybe something closer to like this. And this would be my other one. And this is a horizontal, and you want to call it a shrink because this number is less than one, but it's actually a stretch because everything's backwards. Horizontal stretch and the factor is actually the reciprocal. Instead of one half, I'm gonna flip it and make it two over one, but two over the one is the same thing as two. That is disgusting. The good news is you don't have to do this very often. You actually graph them, you know what I mean? All you have to do is be able to recognize them on most of our questions. So I made a quick little recap board here. I'm not maybe gonna write the answer for every single one. How can you tell what they look like? Notice the difference. Vertical, every time it's vertical, look where all these numbers are. All these numbers, whether it's a shrink, shrink or a stretch, all these numbers, these letter A numbers, are in front of the letter X. They're in front of the parentheses. If I look at these other ones, look where the number, the letter A is on all of these. The horizontal ones, the number is inside the parentheses. That's how you can tell if it's vertical or horizontal. If the number is outside the parentheses and in front of the letter F, vertical. If it's inside the parentheses with the letter X, or if they pick a different letter, that's fine too. If it's inside the parentheses, then it's horizontal, okay? How do you tell which is which? If it's a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink, you just look and see how big the number is. This, vertical stretch by a factor of two, vertical stretch by a factor of four, vertical stretch by a factor of seven, vertical stretch by a factor of 5.5, vertical stretch by a factor of three, vertical stretch by a factor of 1.2, easy. All these are numbers that are in between zero and one. They're decimals and fractions in between zero and one. That's your clue that you have a vertical shrink. Vertical shrink by a factor of half. Vertical shrink by a factor of one third. Vertical shrink by a factor of two fifths. Vertical shrink by a factor of three sevenths. Vertical shrink by a factor of 0 0.6. Vertical shrink by a factor of 0.85. Easy. Vertical is so easy. They are my friend because it's straightforward. What you see is what you get. Easy. Now these red ones over here, not so easy. Everything is backwards from the way that it looks. The number, the letter A, is inside the parentheses, and now it's the opposite. 
Numbers that are bigger than one are actually the shrinks, and numbers that are fractions and decimals in between zero and one are actually the stretches. That's backwards from the other one, right? And then when you do the, the factor, you flip it and do the reciprocal. So this is a vertical, or excuse me, I keep saying vertical. It's a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. Horizontal stretch by a factor of five. Horizontal stretch by a factor of three over two. Horizontal stretch by a factor of nine over four. Horizontal stretch by a factor of, okay, what is, 0.5 is one half, right? So if I flip one half, I get two. This is a stretch, horizontal stretch by a factor of two. And this one, 0.31, uh, that's what? 31 over 100. So this would be a horizontal stretch by a factor of the reciprocal, 100 over 31, which is kind of weird. Okay, the last thing, and then I promise I'm done. Horizontal shrinks, these are gonna fool you, right? These numbers are bigger than one. But remember, when you're doing horizontal, everything is backwards. So this is in the parentheses. It's a number bigger than one. When it's in the parentheses, I know it's horizontal. If it's bigger than one, it's actually a shrink. This is a shrink by a factor of one half. I need to do the reciprocal. This is a horizontal shrink by a factor of one third because one third is the reciprocal of three, right? Three over one. This is a horizontal shrink by a factor of one fifth. This is a horizontal shrink by a factor of uh, 2.5 would be this would be this so this would be a horizontal shrink by a factor of the reciprocal right two fifths instead of five over two three and a half is really seven over two so if I do the reciprocal this is a horizontal shrink by a factor of two over seven and this is a horizontal shrink by a factor of one over seven okay I hope this board makes sense if this board makes sense you'll be able to do awesome on the questions Okay, I'm shaking my camera. I'm getting close to 18 minutes. I promise I'm going to stop. Please email me if you have any questions on this assignment or if you want to retry it, if you do it the first time and it doesn't work so well. I'm going to put the check on there where you can check your answer before you submit it so you can see if you have it right or wrong. Thank you so much for watching and your attention. I'll catch you in another one.